segue into the whole security token. Mm -hmm. ICOs out, securities are in because it's a well-regulated space. Yep, yeah. And probably because of that, it has a much brighter future. Do you uh, do you have any connection with it? Do you do, you do anything in that space? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, two different ball games: ICO and SDO. What's the moonshot? What's my moonshot in blockchain? What it can do? Tokenize the language of the new blockchain based financial markets. Can you speak it? Subscribe to Tokenize and let's find out together. Hi, my name is Richard Magel. I'm the CEO of ODEM. ODEM is an on demand education marketplace, allows students to connect directly with educators for an accredited degree. We are uh, in Zug, Switzerland, and we have offices in 10 other countries San Francisco, Beijing, and quite a few more. Well, uh, I spent six years, we have another company called Accelerators, is our partner company with Odom now. Uh, Accelerators offered overseas education with students coming to the United States for high brand universities like Berkeley, Stanford, Harvard University, and so forth. And what we found was uh, when you do international education, there's a lot of different middlemen. So at the time the students will actually get to those universities, uh, they would have to go through five different agents. And by the time the students got the bill, it was maybe five, six times what the actual cost was. And we saw a kind of an imbalance uh, for people who can really access this education is people who, uh, who had a lot of money. So what we want to do, with our, based on our travels to a lot of developing countries, we really wanted to start focusing on how we get those students you know, into the mainstream of education. So we looked at blockchain uh, technology. We really needed something that so you move the middleman, you remove universities from the transaction. There needs to be somebody who's going to govern the whole process. And smart contracts with Ethereum was a uh, function of terms and condition that would ensure the educators and educator can verify the students as well and ensure everybody in the party that the program is going to happen. So that was really important to be able to build that trust. So uh, that was probably the big aha moment that we had and we decided to move to that direction. We are uh, starting to work with um, governments. We uh, sat down with the Prime Minister's office in uh, Malta. I'm visiting Beijing with an invite with the Council General of uh, San Francisco uh, to meet with the Department of Education. Everybody knows that China is a big consumer of education. Uh, they have a lot of people to educate. And so we're going there to look for the blessing of the Chinese government so we can implement uh, this uh, on-demand uh, education marketplace for their people. I can talk about a few governments that I think are really doing a good job. Venma out of Switzerland have really embraced this technology and have worked with the crypto and blockchain community to create laws. And one of the reasons why uh, we decided to incorporate in uh, Switzerland is just because of those reasons. So there is uh, countries that are in the forefront. And you know, you talk about Malta, we talk about Luxembourg. Their countries are gonna be uh, a step ahead. Now, I always look at uh, the mature companies like big corporations. They're the big boats and it's hard for them to kind of turn because they're so they're dealing with so much. But they are, they are watching and protecting uh, their people, especially in the cryptocurrency world. Everybody knows in the first part of the, tra the whole trading imbalances, there was a lot of scams and so forth. So uh, I know they're, they're watching, um, especially the SEC in the United States, they're watching uh, and making sure their people are not being taken. Uh, Chinese government banned it. There's other governments that are banning it. India. I think what what they're trying to do is not crush innovation. Um, China might be banning cryptocurrency trading, but they're not banning the uh, blockchain development. So as 
Um, these, in, in big corporations are the same way. All the big you know, corporations are 100 plus years old. They're sitting back and they're waiting. They're doing their research and they're going to see how this whole thing develops. But it's the little guys who are going to come in and teach them. The digital disruptors. No, I think if you follow the decentralized format, that's the whole uh, crux of uh, blockchain technology. It's really uh, removing the middle layer, the centralized world, to allow the little guys to be able to work together instead of always somebody has their hand in it. And, or somebody saying, no, you can't do it because you can't afford it. So now you and me can work together and smaller countries, now they can actually compete out in the outside world because they don't have to go through these big centralized, you know, uh, behemoth uh, companies or, you know, governments to actually do commerce. So it's really giving a, a, a leg up. What we have to watch is see how government uh, tries to regulate. Hopefully they'll let free enterprise happen and where everybody can really benefit from it. About a month, and, or sorry, a year and a half ago, I came up with this amazing, huge, humongous, audacious vision. Now, if I would have taken that to you know, some BC company, they would probably said no, because I don't fit in their ecosystem, right? So, but what I did was um, we did an ICO. So guess what? Those little guys believe in the vision and they started contributing to our ICO. And guess what? I had enough money to start the company, hire six, uh, 52 people, and now we're about to launch a year and a half later. So that little guy is now has partnerships with governments, partnerships with GE, partnership with uh, you know, universities, we had first school in uh, uh, Canada, uh, Cairo, Pakistan, and so forth. So that little guy, had a chance and uh, so this you know this ability to have the ICO it was really good people believed in the vision Two different ball games, ICO and STO. Um, I like the STO because it gives more governance in the process. Uh, but uh, my concern is it's going to take the little guys out who want to invest in these companies. Um, uh, they're not going to. I mean, it, the STOs are more for the big boys, the institutional buyers who expect to have governance um, around any investments they make. So, uh, and that's also giving up the equity, uh, part of your equity of your company. Um, unfortunately, uh, depending on, you know, uh, what the financial regulators uh, do, they may, um, like in the United States, they may uh, not allow um, non-credited investors to be part of the FCO. So, um, I have kind of mixed feelings about that. Um, I like the governance part. I, I don't like the... Um, making it uh, um, in inclusive, you know, to only the people who have money. Well, I can talk from my, pers my, my own perspective, from, uh, business perspective. So, uh, you know, 93.7% of people never even get to go to university. I travel, um, I don't know, over the last year and a half, maybe 75 countries, a lot of them in uh, developing worlds or developing economies. And uh, I see uh, multinational uh, uh, and big governments putting a lot of money in these countries. Uh, to help, you know, where it provides jobs, stability, and it's not happening. These multinational governments have to bring people from the outside world because these students, these people, uh, who are great people, uh, do not have the skills to take these jobs. What I like to see is more people looking at the big picture, uh, and I think the blockchain is the machine of trust. <clears throat> and I think. Uh, 
it's old technology, it's been around, but it's enabling, the light bulb came off and it is enabling to be able to do special things. Ideally, I like to uh, see governments, big corporations, nonprofits, family offices embrace it. Give us some slack, support us, and let's see where it goes. There's a lot of problems out there in the world. The technology, let, let, let the technologists go in. Let, let us digital disruptors go in and push the envelope. You know, this is what we do, this is what uh, uh, we were born for. But the ideal situation is let us dream, let us build, and let us help people, and uh, be there when we need your help. And uh, at that point, it'll work out for everybody around the world. We need to figure out how do we solve uh, the social, economic, and political uh, landscape. It's a, we've got some big problems, and uh, we think that smaller companies can really help, like they usually do.